live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering UiPath Forward Americas 2019. Brought to you by UiPath. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events and we extract the signal from the noise. This is day two of UI Path Forward 3, the third North American conference that UI Path, the rocket ship that is UI Path. Clemmy Malley is here. She's the Enterprise RPA Center of Excellence lead at Next Era Energy. Welcome, great to have you. And Marisa Koganauer, who's the Managing Principal of Intelligent Automation and Technology at Cognizant. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming on. How's the show going for you? It's been great so far. Yes, it's been is awesome. This your, have you been to multiple? Uh, this is my third. Yep. Really? Um, yes. Okay, great. So, How does this compare? It has changed significantly in three <laughs> years. So it was very small in New York in 2017, and even last year grew. Um, and now it's a two-year event. <laughs> yeah, last over. year Miami was, I don't know, it was, probably, it was nice. you know, definitely less than, yep. uh, smaller than this, but it was happening, kind of hip vibe. We're here in Vegas, everybody yep. loves to be in Vegas. Yep. Um, Cubans comes to Vegas a lot. <laughs> so tell me more about your role um, at Next Era Energy, but let's start with the company. You guys are multi-billion, many, many, tens of billions, probably close to $20 billion energy yeah. firm. Really dynamic industry. Yeah, so Next Era Energy is actually an, an awesome company, right? So we're the world's largest in clean renewable energy. Um, so with uh, wind and solar, really. Um, and we also have Florida Power and Light, which is the one of the child companies to Nextera as the parent, um, which is headquartered out of uh, Florida. So um, it, it's usually the regulated side of, of power in the state of Florida. So. We know those guys. We've actually done some work with Florida Power and Light. Cool, cool people down there. And we heard um, one of the keynotes today, Craig LeClaire was saying, yeah, those center of excellence, that's actually maybe asking too much. But there are a lot of folks here that are sort of involved in a, in a COE, and that's kind of your role, but is that, I was surprised to hear him say that. Uh, I don't know if you were in the keynote this morning, but it was it a challenge to get a center of excellence? Uh, what is that all about? So I think there's a little bit of caution around doing it initially. Um, people are very aggressive, and we, we actually learned from this story. So when we started, it was more about showing value, building as many automations as possible. We didn't really care about having a COE. Um, the COE just happened to form. Okay. Um, because we found out we needed some level of governance and control around what we were doing. Um, but now, now that I look back on it, it's really instrumental to making sure that we have the success. So whether you do uh, a hybrid development to automation, um, which you know you can have citizen development, um, or you're fully centralized, I think having the, stroy, the strong COE to have that, that um, core governance uh, model and control um, and process is important. Marisa, so you know your title is not, there's not RPA in your title, right? RPA is too narrow, right? Yeah. In your business, you're trying to help transform companies, it's all yes. about automation, but maybe explain a little bit about your, your practice and your role. Sure, so Cognos has been on the automation journey now for, for years. We started back in 2014 and right out the gate, it was all about intelligent automation, just not RPA. Because we knew to be able to do end-to-end -end solutions, you would need multiple technologies to really get the job done and get the outcomes they wanted. So we sit now over 2,500 folks at our practice going out working cross industry, cross regions, to be able to work with people like Clemmy to put in their program. And we've even added some stuff recently, a lot of it actually inspired by Nextera. And we have an advisory team now. And our whole job is to go in and help people unstuck their programs, for lack of a better way to say it. Help them think about how do you put that foundation, get a little bit stronger, and actually enable scale and putting in all this technology to get outcomes versus just focusing on just the pure play RPA, which a lot of people struggle to gain the benefits from. So Clemmy, what, what leads you to the decision to bring in an outside firm like Cognizant. What's that discussion like internally? So I'll just give you a little bit of backstory because I think that's interesting as well. Um, when we started playing with RPA in um, late 2016, early 2017, we knew that we wanted to do a lot of things in-house, but in order to have um, a flex model and um, really develop automations across the company, we need to have a partner. Um, and we wanted them to focus more on uh, d delivery, so developing, um, and then partner with us to give us some, you know, 
best practices, things that we could do better. But we, as a, when we founded the COE, we knew what we wanted to do. Um, so we actually had two other partners before we went with Cognizant. Um, and that was a huge challenge for us. We found we were reworking a lot of the code that they gave us. Um, they weren't there to be our partners. They wanted to come and actually do the work for us instead of enabling us to be successful. Um, and we actually said, we don't want a partner. Um, and then Cognizant came in and they actually were like, let's, Let's give you somebody. So we, we wanted somebody around delivery because we said, okay, now that we centralized, we have a good foundation, a good model, we're gonna need to focus on scale. So how do we do that? We need a flex model. Um, so Cognizant came in and they, they said, well, we're gonna offer you a delivery lead to help focus on making sure you get the automations out the door. Well, Marisa actually showed up, which was <laughs> one of the best hidden surprises that we've received. Um, and she really just came in, learned the company, um, learned our culture, and was able to say, okay, here's some guidance. How, what can you um, instill? What can you bring, what, you know, tracking, um, and, and start capturing the outcomes that she's mentioned. Um, and I know that was a little bit more, but it's, no, it's been really quite a background. journey. But so Marissa, I, I'm hearing that from Clemmy that you were willing to teach these guys how to fish as opposed yep. to just perpetual hourly, you yeah. know, daily rate billing. Yep, and that's, that's really what our belief is. We can go in and yes, we could augment from resourcing perspective, help them deliver, develop, support everything, which we do and we work with Clemmy and others to do that. But what's really important to get to scale was how do we teach them how to go do this? Because if you're going to really embed this this type of automation culture and mindset, you have to teach people how to do it. It's not about just leaning on me. I, I need to help Clemmy, I need to help her team, and also their leadership and their employees on how do you identify opportunities and how do you make these things actually work and run. So you really understand the organization. Clemmy was saying you, you learn the culture. Yeah. So you're not just a you know salesperson going in and <laughs> you know hanging out in the cube. Um, so you're kind of an extension, yeah. really, of the staff. So either of you, if you can explain to me sort of where RPA fits into this broader vision, that would really sure. be helpful. Sure, so maybe I could kick a little bit off on what I'm seeing from, from clients like Clemmy and also other customers. So what you'll find is RPA tends to be like this gateway. It's the stepping stone to all things automation because folks in the business, they really understand it. It's rule-based, right? Like it's a game of Simon Says in some ways when you first get this going. And then after that, it's, it's enabling the other technology and looking at, look, if I'm going to go end to end, what do I need to get the job done? What do I need around data intake? How do I have the right framework to pick the right OCO, OCR tool or put analytics on or machine learning? Because there's so much out there today and you need to have the stuff that's right fit to come in. And so it's really about looking at what's that company strategy and then looking at this as a tool set and how to use these tools to go and get the job done. Done. And that's what we were doing a lot with Clemmy and team when we sat down, they have a steering committee that's chaired by their CIO, chief accounting officer, and senior leaders from every business unit across their enterprise. So you mentioned scaling. Yep. Uh, we heard today um, in the prediction segment that you know, it's good, we're going to move from snowflake to snowball. And, and so I would think for scaling, it's important to identify reusable components. And so how have you, how has that played out for you and, and how's the scaling going? Yeah, so that's been one really cool um, component that we've built out in the COE. So I had my team actually vote on a name um, and we said we want to go after reusable components. They decided to call them microbots. So it's a cool little term that we've coined. That's cool. Um, and our CIO and CIO actually talk about them frequently. How are Thank microbots? You. How many do we have? You know, what are they doing? Um, so it's pretty catchy. Um, but what it's really enabled us is to build re these reusable snip snippets of code that are specific to how we perform as a company um, that we can plug and play and reduce our cycle time. So we've actually reduced our cycle time by over 50%. Um, and the reusable, com reusable components is one of the major key components. So how do you share those components? Are they available in some kind of internal marketplace? And how do you train people to actually know what to apply? Where? Right, so because we're centralized, it's a little bit easier, right? We have a stored repository where they're um, they're available. We and document that's the COE, them. so I'm right. sorry to interrupt, the COE's responsibility.
capacity? And, okay. Exactly. So the COE has it. Um, we're actually working with Cognizant right now to figure out how can we um, document those further, right, and UiPath. Um, there's a lot of cool uh, tools that were introduced uh, this week. So I think we're definitely going to be leveraging from them. Um, but the ability to really show what they are, make them available, um, and we're doing all of that internally right now, um, probably a little manual. Um, so it'll be great to uh, have that available. Mm -hmm. So Amazon has this cool concept, uh, they call it working backwards documents. I don't know if you ever heard this, but what they do is they basically write the press release, <laughs> like thinking five years in advance, how they started AWS, they actually wrote. This is what we always, and then they work backwards from there. So my question is around engineering outcomes. Okay. You know, can you engineer outcomes, and is that how you were thinking about this, or is it just too, too many unknown parts of the process that you can't you know, predict? So I think one of the things that we did was, we did think about what, was, what did we want to achieve with this? So one of the big programs that Clemmy and the team have is also around Accelerate. And they're key initiatives to drive, whether it's improved customer experience, more efficiencies in certain processes across the company. And so we looked at that first and said, okay, how do we enable that? That's a top strategy driven by their CEO. And even when we prioritize all the work, we actually build a model for them so that it's objective. So if any opportunities that come in align to those key outcomes that the company's striving for, they get prioritized first to be worked on. I actually also think this is where this is all going. Everyone focuses today on these automation COEs and automation teams, but what you'll see, and this is happening at Next Era, and all the places we're starting to see this scale, is you end up with this like outcomes management office. It's this core nucleus of a team that is automation, there's IT at the table, there's this lean quality mindset at the table, and they're actually looking at opportunities and saying, all right, this one's yours, this one's yours, and then I'll pick up from you. And it's driving them the right outcomes for the organization versus just saying, you know, I have a hammer, I'm going to go find a nail, which sometimes happens. Right, oh, for sure. Um, and it, it may be a fine, you know, nail to hit, but it might not be the most strategic or exactly. the most valuable. <laughs> well, so what are some examples of, of, you know, areas that you're most excited about, that you've, where you've applied automation and they've given a business outcome that's been successful? Yeah, so we are an energy company, um, and one of, you know, we've had a lot of really awesome brainstorming sessions um, that we've held with UiPath and Cognizant, um, and a couple of key ones that have come out of it really around um, storm season is big for us in the state of Florida. And um, making sure that our criti critical infrastructure is available, so our nursing homes, our hospitals, um, and so on. So we've actually built automations that help us to ping and make sure that they're available so that we can stay proactive, right? Um, there's also a cool use case around really the intelligent automation space. Um, so our linemen in their trucks are saying, hey, we spend a lot of time having to log on the computer, log our tickets, um, you know, and then we have to turn our computers off, drive to the next site, um, and we're not able to restore as much power or resolve issues as quickly as possible. So we said, how, we, how can we enable them? Speech recognition, where they can talk to it, it can log a ticket for them on their behalf. So, it's pretty exciting. So that's kind of an interesting example where you know RPA in and of itself is not going to solve that problem, right? But it's just speech regular. So you got to bring in other technology. So you're using what? Some NLP capability? Or? Yeah, so that's one we're currently working on. But yes, yeah, so you would need um, some type of cognitive speech recognition. Um, and so you're just going to play around with that in R&D right yeah. now is the, the, mm -hmm. the speech resonance? Yeah. Which as you know is not perfect, right? It is not. There's, talk to us, we know about them all. <laughs> because we transcribe every word that's said on the cube. And so <laughs> and there's some good ones and there's some not so good ones. So they're getting better though, it's getting better. Yes. And that's going to be kind of commodity, mm -hmm. you know, shortly. You, you really just need good enough, right? I mean, yeah. is, that, is that true or do you need so, like, near perfect? I think there's a, a happy medium and it depends on what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, we're logging tickets, so there might be some variability that you can have. Um, but I will say, so Nextera is um, really focused on energy, but they're also trying to set themselves apart. So they're trying to focus on innovation as well. Um, so this is um, a lot of the areas that they're focusing on, the, the machine learning and the processing, and we even have chat bots that they're coining and branding internally. Um, so it's pretty So exciting. Next Era is, uh, are you entirely uh, uh, new energy? Are you, is that right, no fossil fuels or? Um, so it's all clean, clean energy. 
Enterprise, across awesome. the enterprise. How's, how's, how's that going? Obviously you guys are very successful, but I mean, what's um, kind of happening in the energy business today? You've sort of seen a resurgence in oil, right? But <laughs> Yeah, so I think we had a really good boom. Um, you know, a couple years ago there were a lot of tax credits, so we were able to grow that side of our company, um, and it enabled us to really pivot to be the clean energy that we are. Um, but, I mean, that's I mean, key, right? I mean, United States, we want to lead <laughs> in clean energy. Yeah. Right? And I'm not sure we are. I mean, I, I mean, like you say, there was tax incentives and credits that sort of drove a lot of innovation, but I mean, is it, am I correct? You see sort of countries outside the U.S. really maybe leaning in harder. I mean, obviously we got next era, but. I mean, I think there is definitely competition out there. Uh -huh. um, we're focused on trying to be, maybe not the best, but compete with the best. Um, and we're also trying to focus on what's next, right? So be proactive and, and um, grow the company in, in a multitude of ways, maybe even outside the energy sector, uh -huh. um, just to make sure that we can compete. But really, what we're focused on is the clean renewables. So. Well, it's awesome. I mean, we, we as a country, we need this, and uh, it's great to have organizations like yours. Mar Marisa, I'll give you the final word, kind of the landscape of automation. Yep. You know, what inning are we in? You know, every baseball analogy, or you know, how far can this thing go? You know, and what, what's your sort of as you as you pull out the binoculars, maybe yep. not the telescope, but the binoculars. Where do you see it going? I think there's a lot of runway left. So if you look at a lot of the research out there today, I heard today. Uh, 10% was quoted by one person. I've heard 13% quoted from HFS around where are we at on scale from an RPA perspective. And that's just RPA. Yeah. So that means there's still so much out there to still go and look at and be able to make an impact. But if you look, there's also a lot of runway on this intelligent automation. And that's where I think we have to shift the focus. And that's, you're seeing it now at these conferences that you're starting to see people talk about how do I integrate? How do I actually think about connecting the dots to get bigger and broader outcomes for an organization? And I think that's where we're going to shift to is talking about how do we bring together multiple technologies to be able to go and get these end-to-end -end solutions for customers and ultimately go where we were talking a little bit about before on outcome focused for an organization. Not talking about just how do I go do AI, how do I go put a bot in, but I want to achieve this outcome for my customer, I need to grow the top line, I'm getting this feedback, or even internally, I want to get more efficient so I can deliver and focus there, and then what we'll do is find the right tools to be able to move all that forward. It's interesting, um, we, we're out of time, but you think about, you know, you, you, somewhat surprising when people hear what you just said, Marissa, because people think, wow, we have this technology for 50 years, haven't we automated everything? Well, Daniel Dinez last night put forth the premise that all this technology is actually creating inefficiencies and somewhat creating the problem, so <laughs> technology's kind of got us into the problem, We'll see if technology can get us out. All right. Thanks, you guys, for coming on theCUBE. Thank really you. Thank you for it. having us. You're welcome. All right, Thanks. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. UiPath Forward 3 from Las Vegas. You're watching theCUBE.